Our second speaker is Larry Goldberg from uh, National Writers Union. <coughs> um, he has been the president of the union since 2009. Um, NWU is a union of freelance writers, all genres and all platforms and media. Larry was a freelance labor consultant for 15 years in Chicago after having spent three decades as an auto worker, truck driver and healthcare worker. As head of NWU, the union has played a more robust role in the International Federation of Journalists, and he has appeared at human rights and journalism conferences in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Dublin, Ireland, Marrakesh, Morocco, and Karachi, Pakistan. Last October, NWU hosted a forum on the crackdown on the media in Turkey with the Turkish journalists and academic. Next week, um, they will host us, the Secretary General of the Somali Union of Journalists, defying Trump's ban on Muslims from Somalia. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> well, first, I, I want to thank uh, ALIM and RIT for giving us an opportunity to add our voice to the, to the voices demanding uh, the release of journalists in Turkey and uh, press freedom, fights of press freedom. Uh, there's an old saying that the first casualty of war is the truth. Mm. And I think that explains the international phenomena taking place right now. Certainly the, uh, the arrest of uh, Ahmed Sheikh is just the latest outrage in what's become an all-out assault on journalists and journalism uh, in Turkey. Ahmed being a prolific writer and a tireless advocate and uh, you know, the, uh, we, we want to underline that a free and open press is a fundamental component to any society's claim at democracy. Uh, and that this is what's under attack in Turkey, but also internationally. Uh, recently, there are reports of uh, journalists in Iran uh, being flogged, uh, publicly flogging and uh, being sent to prison with high fines uh, during the uh, 2014 bombing of Gaza by Israel. Uh, Palestinian media centers were targeted and uh, about 13 uh, journalists killed. Uh, last year in the Middle East and Arab world, 30 journalists were killed as a whole while doing their job, either through uh, targeted murders, bombing attacks, or being caught in a crossfire. In Iraq, Syria, Yemen, most were freelancers, most were under 30 years old, with little protective gear or training, safety training. And we represent freelancers, so this is very near and dear to our hearts. Uh, I would also point out that uh, both James Foley and Stephen Sotloff, who were killed by ISIS in Syria a number of years ago, were also freelancers because the major media outlets didn't want to put uh, the, their resources into this, so freelancers were picking up the, uh, the job. Uh, it should come as no surprise that some of the worst incidents are in the region that's been undone by the U.S. invasion uh, now 14 years ago. And uh, it has, what started out in Iraq certainly has spread throughout the region and affected press freedom throughout the region and throughout the world. As war and instability spread, uh, free press is uh, high on the casualty list. And certainly Turkey is very much in, a part of that war as well, uh, being a, a launch, launching pad for U.S. bombing missions, being a gateway for fighters going to Syria, and also actively attacking Kurds who are in the struggle against ISIS. The Erdogan government claiming self-defense about the coup. You know, we know the numbers already. You know, thousands of journalists have been attacked, hundreds are in jail, dozens and dozens of media sites have been closed. It's also no surprise that here in the U.S., new and not so new attacks on the press bear a chill chilling resemblance to what's taking place in Turkey. Today, under Trump, uh, we live in a world of alternative facts and the press has been publicly declared as the uh, opposition party. Uh, six reporters, freelancers, were arrested on Inauguration Day and faced felony charges. But clearly it's not just Trump. Reporters were beaten and arrested and assaulted 
uh, covering the Dakota Access Pipeline and covering demonstrations against racist police brutality in New York City and Ferguson, Missouri. Also, the Obama administration prosecuted nine cases under the Espionage Act, more than all previous administrations combined, in an attempt to silence whistleblowers and stop leaks to the media, all in the name of Homeland Security, very similar to the claim being made in Turkey. Uh, the Obama administration opened the door that Trump and Bannon are charging through today. NWU recently signed a joint letter with 60 writers' organizations to the Trump administration asking for a meeting to ensure press access to the administration <coughs> and to maintain a strong Freedom of Information Act. We're also meeting with other writers' organizations to develop a strategy to combat the attacks on the media in the coming period, especially uh, guaranteeing access to the administration, how to deal with threats, both legal and physical, uh, in this new period. Uh, we ask all interested organizations to uh, join us in planning a mass uh, response on May 3rd, which is World Press Freedom Day, and to join us next week as we host Omar Farouk Osman, the uh, Secretary General of the Somali Union of Journalists, in defiance of Trump's racist ban on Muslims. Uh, we join in the call and offer whatever support we can to free Ahmed Sheikh and all journalists being held in Turkey. Thank you.